The PLC team you will see in this video is composed of elementary school teachers who will be collaboratively analyzing the data from a common summative assessment. They gave this assessment to their students at the end of a unit of study. PLC teams engage in this process for a number of reasons. First, the team monitors the learning of all of the students across a grade level. No longer is a teacher working within a silo and focused only on his or her students. Second, analyzing the end of unit common assessments leads to decisions about revising curriculum units and revising assessments so that both teaching and learning can be improved. Finally, the PLC team begins to identify targeted professional learning needs and opportunities as they seek to improve their practice. One way that the team analyzes student assessment data is through a template that captures student scores in relation to specific student learning objectives. This can also be done electronically using a number of tools, including Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets. Remember though, that it's not enough to just discuss and analyze general student scores. The data must be broken down so that teachers can see how each student performed in relation to the specific student learning objectives of the unit. This information allows teachers to adjust future units and instruction as well. In other words, summative assessment data can be used formatively to improve student learning. Let's take a look at a PLC team engaged in this dialogue. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Very good. Great. Well, today we're going to be looking at our uh, summative assessment data from our operations with fractions unit. Um, and before we get started, like we always do, we're going to start by going over our PLC uh, norms. Just to make sure we're all on the same table with those. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to honor and our start and end time. So thank you for very much for coming in on time today. Uh, we're going to state the objective and stay focused. And we're going to actively listen and participate. We're going to voice and respond to concerns positively and non-judgmentally. We'll address violations of the norms. And we'll slow down to think, reflect, and puzzle about things. So is everyone in agreement with those norms? Sounds yeah. good. Great. Although we use these norms for all of our PLC meetings, it's important to actually look at some specific um, guidelines for how we're going to deal with uh, analyzing data. So number one, we're going to be honest about what the data is saying about our current reality. Uh, number two, no blaming. Number three, we're going to focus on what the data says about the progress of each student. Number four, we're going to recognize that it is not about us. The data is not a reflection of our teaching, it's a reflection of student learning. So what we do with the data is a reflection of our professionalism. Number five, we're gonna reflect on how unit activities or strategies can be revised. Number six, we're gonna share best practices as well as things that may not have worked out how we planned. Number seven, we're going to review the assessment to ensure it effectively measures the student learning objectives. Number eight, if there's formative assessment, so we want to make sure that we use the data to plan the next instructional steps, including flexible grouping, differentiation, and intervention. Number nine, and this is a summative assessment, we're going to discuss how we will address um, students who did not meet proficiency. And finally, do we need to make any revisions to the unit as a whole or to the assessment? And do we need to find um, further professional resources to help us make revisions? So we know that in the past, uh, it's worked really well when we let other people lead the discussion. So I was thinking, Robin, today, if you wanted to lead us um, in discussing our summative assessment data. So we're just going to follow the steps as we usually do in analyzing the summative assessment data. So we're going to use the green for the advanced or proficient students, that's the threes and the fours. The yellow for developing, so highlight those students in yellow that have a two. And any students that have a one, we're going to use the pink highlighter. Robin, we're going to highlight our formative assessment data as well? Yes, do both, okay. both, both sets, because we want to look at those student learning objectives, those first two that we did, and do some comparing. Everybody good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so what did, what did you see with the highlighting? What did that tell us? 
Well, I noticed that um, overall, my students were uh, widely proficient and advanced proficient um, in most of these learning objectives. However, um, learning objective number two, um, which was to decompose a fraction into a sum of fractions with the same denominator, uh, that was the learning objective that my students struggled with the most. So 10 out of 18 were below proficient. So really, um, number two is what stood out to me. So we talked about a little bit just now about which ones, which student learning objectives have the greatest number of students highlighted in yellow and pink. What do you think their scores on each part of the rubric tell us? Uh, when I was highlighting my information, I found that the learning objective number five uh, had stumped my students the most, multiplying whole numbers and fractions. But I definitely want to look back at their tests individually just to see if it was a multiplication issue or if they actually weren't able to do that particular skill of multiplying a whole number to a fraction. Um, that was 12 out of my 18 that did not succeed there. The summative assessment that we did, do you feel it effectively measured the student achievement? Or do we need to do some revisions? I felt that you know, when we developed the assessment um, after we had unpacked the standards and we went and um, came up with our instructional plan, I felt that our assessment that we created was pretty strong. The assessment questions, they all applied um, to these five learning objectives. Um, so I feel that it doesn't need revision. It's, you know, that we need to take a look at our strategies mm -hmm. um, and activities that we're doing with the students. I agree. Mm -hmm. What interventions were used throughout the unit with the students highlighted in pink and yellow? Uh, did they continue to make the same errors? I'm noticing that I have at least three students who in student learning objective number two, which was our, our weakness, whose scores actually went down from the formative assessment to the summative assessment. That's concerning for me as a teacher. Um, I think I may have rushed some of them. I also have one student that I'm pretty concerned about. You know, she's had some struggles all year and uh, particularly in this unit. So I would really like to do some one-on-one -on -one work with her or if there's any students um, that we collectively see that need that extra instruction, maybe we could send them all to one classroom um, yes. for a few days and give them that really intense, intensive instruction. Will these student learning objectives be addressed again and in what unit? We, we all know that fractions are such an integral part of fourth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll I know that- they carry on. They I know carry that on. they do mm -hmm. come back again in our uh, measurement and data unit. Like so we really need to make sure that they have that strong base so we might have to do some more reteaching and coming up with some specific summative assessments that actually target our weaker areas. Absolutely. What other teachers do you think we need to share this information with? Well, I know that they've been using um, fractions and measurement in science, so we may want to inform their science teachers of you know some areas of weakness. Right, yeah, absolutely. What does the data tell us about our instruction? What strategies, activities, resources, and assessments need to remain in our unit, and what do you think we need to change? I need to um, see if I was able to use all the resources that were listed in the unit. So if anybody had any additional resources that they found for Learning Objective 2, if you um, wouldn't mind putting that in the unit that's in the Google Doc. Well, I think that since, like we said earlier, our learning objectives that didn't do so well in our classrooms are also different, that maybe if we were came next time with things that worked for us, things that didn't necessarily work for us for almost each one, whoever had three did really well with three and four, you could help me, and then I could help you with, you know, one, two, and so forth and so on. That'd be fantastic. So why don't we do that next time, just bring and share resources and best practices from our classrooms uh, that pertain to these specific student learning objectives. That sounds great. Okay. All right, well, I think we did a great job today, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Thanks. All right. In the early part of a CAR process, PLC teams unpacked the standards and created clear, student-friendly learning objectives. As you have seen in this video, these SLOs have now been used to assess students' progress in the summative end-of-unit assessment. Alignment throughout all steps of the instructional process, from curriculum development to instructional decisions to formative and summative assessments, is critical if we are to improve student learning.
When teachers analyze summative assessment data collaboratively, their work significantly impacts teacher practice and student learning. They respond to the data by revising curriculum, modifying assessments, and seeking targeted areas for professional learning that will improve teaching and learning. These are key pieces in creating a continuous cycle of school improvement.